Today I will show you how I use Stable Diffusion and Photoshop to create the design for a Match 3 fictional game named Jungle Picks, where players need to match three or more similar objects to score points and clear them from the board. I will start first with a logo, but probably I should have designed it at the end after the game design so I can get it to match better with the game. I am using Photoshop with a black brush and symmetry activated to draw on a white background. You can use any font for text and in stable diffusion, I will get a style that matches the prompt. I am using Stable Diffusion Forge UI installed locally on Windows for the model. I will use Juggernaut XL, which you can find on the Civit AI website. I will use the latest version, number 10, the one with the Roman numeral X, but other versions work okay too. I still sometimes use version 9. You can download this model or any other model you like and place it in the Web UI folder, then in the Models folder, and finally in the Stable Diffusion folder. As you can see, I already have both version 9 and 10 here. Um, I will also use Control Net, so you need a canny model that you can get from this page. The one I use is the Koya Control Light XL canny model. It has a download button, and you can download it and uh, put it in the Web UI folder, then in the Models folder, and specifically in the Control Net folder. You can put all the Control Net models you downloaded here. If your stable diffusion was open, you can refresh it from here and choose it from the list. You also have a refresh for the control net model. If you click on canny, it should add it to the model list. For the sampler, I am using DPM plus plus 2M Keras with 30 sampling steps and 1024 pixels. Enable control net. It should have that enable check mark when it's enabled. Drop your sketch here, then click on canny for the control type. It should automatically put canny in the preprocessor. For the model, use the one I just showed you. The rest of the settings can work on default, but you can play around with sliders for control, weight, and for control mode. You can choose other options depending on the image and prompt you are using. For the prompt, um, I mentioned keywords like logo and the text you want to appear. On the first try, I got something like this. I will use a fixed seed so I can play around with the prompt and see what changes. Um, I will use one of the saved art styles. You can find them in my other video with 260 art styles. I will use the 3D game asset style and generate again. I didn't like that it didn't put a white background. It added some mask in the background too. So I will select that part in the prompt and add more weight to it so it knows that part. It's more important press control and the up arrow a few times. Now when I generate, I get what I wanted. Once you are happy, you can use the high resolution fix to make it larger. You can either use a fixed seed and activate it from here. I use the D8T-X2 upscaler with a denoise strength of 0.3 and upscale by two. If it's inactive, it will still use those settings, um, but you can click on, on this button with the star uh, that will upscale the current generation, um, and you will get a bigger version very similar to your original image, depending on the denoise strength you have set. Now you can open the logo in Photoshop. You know, I like to use the remove tool to, uh, to fix the imperfections, things that look like they should not be there. Um, I will not spend too much time on this since it's not a real project, uh, just for fun, uh, but you get the idea. Then... Since it's on a white background, you can use all kinds of tools to cut it out from the background. Uh, the object selection tool and select object work okay. Um, or you can drag around the subject to make a selection. Then if you apply a mask, you can mask out that background. You can then add a colored background behind to uh, check how good the cutout is. I missed this little hole during recording um, and fixed it later. Uh, then you, you can apply that mask and trim it so your document has the same size as your image. Now, uh, it can be saved as a PNG, and you can have a nice big logo that could work for a game. By the way, if you have no idea what to design, you can ask ChatGPT. Look at what it suggests um, to create for logos, menus, backgrounds, and so on. Uh, it can be quite useful. Back to Photoshop, I wanted to 
you know, I'll create a loading bar. So I quickly um, added some, uh, you know, round rectangles to get the shape of the loading bar. On the left, I wanted something like a Mayan sculpture. I didn't know exactly what to draw, so I just did some shapes there that could look like a side view statue or something. Um, just enough information so AI can get the general shape and create something interesting from it. Back to Stable Diffusion, I will enable ControlNet and upload the sketch I made. I'll enable Canny and make sure it's the right model. Um, then for the prompt, I'll describe what I want to appear. I will hit Generate and get a nice bar. I will use the same art style with the 3D game asset so it's more consistent. And I got this version and now I can upscale it to get a bigger version. Back in Photoshop, I, I remove uh, the background again. For the full loading bar, I need some color to show it's full. So I was thinking to paint in green on those feathers from the wings. That is for the loading bar. Um, you can use the empty loading bar and then a mask to reveal the full bar. So I placed the logo and uh, loading bar and I started sketching a landscape that I wanted behind. I wanted a torch, um, some walls, and some exotic plants with a Mayan jungle look. Um, now you still have to make the sketch recognizable. My sketch was too simple and AI didn't see the waterfall in the right too well, so it added some walls instead. Since there, there are so many things in the scene, it's hard to get it all, so I decided to add some colors so uh, AI can identify better what is there. I painted the torch in orange, uh, the waterfall in blue, and some greens for the plants. Uh, it's still a simple sketch. Of course, I can let AI generate how it wants things, but I want it to be guided by me um, to take my ideas so it's more unique. This time, since it has colors, I will use the image to image tab. I will upload the image, and for the image size, I will use a similar ratio to my sketch. And for denoise strength, I am using 0 0.75. I will select the same uh, 3D game asset art style from the styles. The result is completely different because I didn't enable control net, uh, and the denoise is too big. So I will keep the denoise, but this time enable control net with canny, uh, just like before. And now we get an error, a none type error. Epic fail. It worked before and, and now it doesn't. Why? Well, it must be a bug with the forge, but um, the solution in this case is to make sure the width and height are divisible by 64. In this case, 720 divided by 64 is 11.25. So we can take the closest number, which is either 11 or 12, um, and multiply it by 64. We get a number that will work, and we can use that for the size. Now, when we generate, uh, we get something nice based on the ugly sketch I made. Of course, since the sketch is so rough, you can get a lot of versions. Um, you can either change the prompt, um, denoise strength, or generate a few versions until you get something you like. Um, like in this case, I have a nice waterfall and torch. Now, what I like to do sometimes is to drag the result back to image to image. Then I will try a lower denoise value and disable the control net. Now, I can use the exact ratio I want since it works when the control net is disabled. My, my video card can handle it, so I will go with full HD. I hit generate and I get a similar version in full HD. And you can play around with um, denoise strength and generate a few versions until you get something that works for you. I think I will stop at this version. I will probably do some in-painting in some parts of the image. And the final result is this one for the background. I am using a software called DP Animation Maker um, to animate parts of the image like the torch, the waterfall, and some lava. I also need a grid where, you know, the gems will stay on the main play window. So um, I did something quick from shapes, making sure the thin lines have contrast. Um, the first time I had the lines in dark gray and they didn't show up well. Um, I will use the same image to image process as before with the same control net settings and a denoise strength of 0 0.72. The result was too black and white. So I added more words in the prompts, especially golden hour, 
uh, to give it a, a warm color. Now to upscale it, I need to send it to, to the extras tab using that triangular icon. Here you can choose an upscaler and the resize value. I will use two and the result is this grid. Um, I can use Photoshop to cut it out and test it on the background uh, to see how it looks. Uh, later, I did some um, tests with actual gems on it. So I added a dark rectangle so the gems stand out better. Um, for the buttons, uh, I created two round rectangles with contrasting text. So it's easier for Control Net to detect the contours. Uh, I placed all the buttons on the same image to maintain a consistent style. And this time I'm using um, image to image so it can pick up a hint of the colors I want. I will use a prompt generated with ChatGPT for it and uh, same game art style and I upload the buttons image. With a denoise strength of 0 0.72, uh, I hit generate. The result is too similar to, to my image. I need it to be more 3D, so I increase the denoise strength. Now it has more effects on the buttons, but it, it messed up the text. So I will enable Control Net with Canny so AI can see the contour of that text. And now the result is how I expected. Some nice buttons that look like they were crafted by Mayans long time ago. In Photoshop, you can cut it out from the background using the object selection tool. However, in this case, um, some of the white blends um, with the button edge, so a better solution would have been to add a round rectangle and clip that image inside it so it would have a, a clean edge. Uh, the menu screen is starting to come alive. Now it's time to work on the, you know, the game items. In Photoshop, I created three shapes, a square, a triangle with rounded corners, and a hexagon all in different colors. Then in Stable Diffusion, again with a long prompt from ChatGPT, and with that image with the uh, shapes uploaded in the Image to Image tab, um, using the same art style um, with a denoise of 0 0.75 and Control Net and Canny enabled. I hit Generate and got my first gems. Um, you can then adjust the prompt and try to see what different variations you get. The cool thing is that um, it's all in the same style and fits the shape you gave. If you increase the denoise strength, uh, you can get even more variation. Uh, but what I like is that you can uh, change the prompt and you can get another set of icons, change the prompt again and get another one, and so on, until you get enough items for your game. So uh, the secret is to have a set of shapes in your image, then use Canny to get the contour of that. Um, if you have a, a hint of color, you can influence the outcome. Um, but the prompt is also very important, as is the denoise strength. To have more control, you can sketch out each icon. For example, next I will do the uh, cursor icon. So in, um, in Photoshop, I will do a, a quick sketch of how I want the cursor to look. I want it to be um, like a stone spear or something. Um, then since I didn't add any color, I will just use text to image uh, with control net to, to generate it. I got a mouse instead because I didn't add the sketch on the control net. So I am adding that and generating um, again, I will hit generate until I get a version that could work for me. Then in Photoshop, I remove the background and then I test it on the menu screen to see how it would look. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. Uh, leave a like if you found something useful. Um, thank you for watching and have a great day.